Good morning. And I want to say hi to the pastor. We miss you. I hope you're having a good time. Well, we're going up a prayer. prayer. Thank you for joining us this morning. For joining us in La Morada Foursquare Church, a place where we worship and glorify the Lord. And you feel like jumping, get up and jump. You feel like clapping, clap. You feel like shouting, just shout to the Lord. That's what we like doing here. Let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, again, thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Father, we exalt thee, Lord God. We lift up your name on high, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being here. You are invited into this place, Lord Jesus, to do what you want in our hearts this morning, dear Heavenly Father, God. But again, Lord, let us put things aside and pay attention to you, Lord God. Put you first this morning, Lord God. And praise you and glorify you, Lord Jesus. That's why we're here. Father God, I ask that you be with the worship team. Bless them, Lord. Use them in a mighty way, dear Heavenly Father God. Father God, be with our speaker, Tony, this morning, Lord. Anoint him, Lord God, as he brings forth the message, Lord God. Let him speak what you would want him to speak to us, to teach us, Lord Jesus. Thank you again for this day. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We put you first in our lives, dear Heavenly Father, God. Again, let us rejoice and be glad, for this is the day that you have made. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
to know you more, God. You are worthy of all the glory and all the praise. We worship you, Jesus.
bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. You are worthy of all the glory and all the honor yes, and all the Lord, praise. Thank you, brother. Praise you, Lord. There's no one like you. God. Holy, holy, holy are you, God. Thank you, Jesus. With every breath that we breathe, every song that we sing, may you be glorified. May you be magnified. In all that we do, Jesus, you alone deserve the glory and the honor.
Accept this our offering. Let us commune with you, God. Come in and dine with us, God. Allow us to lay our head on your chest, to hear the heartbeat of your song to us. sweet it is to know the Lord. To know the Lord is to know eternal life. We drink from you, O living water. Come forth within us. Overflow, Lord God. Let us be an oasis to one another and to the world. Transform us, God. We pray for the preaching of the word today. Lord. May you rest upon the words that are spoken over us, God. May your wisdom and your life and your love be poured out upon us as we sit to receive your food, the food from which we will never hunger again. that you teach us, God. Bring to our memories this week. And bring to our memories, our lives, Lord God, and where you desire to touch us and to heal us and to renew us and restore. May we submit those places to you, God. We are so safe, God. Thank you for being a space where we can be seen and known. Thank you, God. So we just submit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. morning. How are you guys doing this morning? I think I have an uncooperative uh, music stand. Can you, uh, yeah, yeah. or you can just hand me the stand that's behind you. Perfect. Thank you. Right. And unfortunately, uh, 
I can't be like Pastor Ralph and sit on a stool. It just doesn't work for me. Are we blessed this morning? Are we thankful for being here this morning? Amen. So, <laughs> um, I want to open up the sermon with a phrase we all know. Give thanks in every situation. We've all heard it in some way, shape, or form, right? Give praise in every situation. Give thanks in every situation. But ask yourself, how often do you actually do that? I feel like we get so caught up in life, we are the only ones in our own little world. So it becomes easy to think we're the one that's important, which then translates to prayers of requests, God, can you help me with? Concerns, God, I'm so worried about. Gripes, thinly veiled as requests for help. Lord, help me before they. Lord, help me before I. Lord, help me. And we all know, because I do it too. I'm like, if they say that one more time, Lord, help me. <laughs> but where are the prayers of thanks? Where are the prayers of love? The thoughts of praise throughout the day. Shouldn't we be sending up thanks, love, and praise more often than we're sending requests, concerns, and gripes about our life? Shouldn't that be the case? We're going to look at 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 8, 16 through 19. This is kind of the verse of the sermon. We're going to repeat it a couple of times, but... Verse 16, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. See, I bring this up because for the first time, I actually remembered to do this in a time of what I consider a crisis. Now, I'm referring to a time recently, back in October. Um, I had to call 911. My mom wasn't feeling well. She was having chest pains. And so this is the first time that I've, anything's ever happened to my mom. My mom, I mean, we were talking about it and joking about it and saying the last time she was in the hospital was when she gave birth to us. I, she's been the picture of health. And so... Having to call 911, and you know, they come, they examine, they put her on a chair, take her out to the ambulance and go, but because of COVID, I can't ride with her. So I jump in my car and I'm following the ambulance to the hospital. And then something clicked. Naturally, my response was to pray, right? In those situations. But something clicked for me. I'm riding behind the ambulance looking at it and thinking, and thinking my mom is in there, she's, you know, chest pains and all, but in my mind, praise him, thank him, and I, I'm going to admit, I, <laughs> I'm driving in the car, and I'm like, pause for a minute, like, wait, what? Because it's so against our nature, because immediately it's, Lord, I need your help with this, but I did it. I prayed. It just, for whatever reason, it clicked for me. And so I prayed. And my prayer was something like, thank you, Father. Pray, I praise you in all situations, Father. In the good and the bad, I will praise you, Father. And I praise you now. Now, for me, praying normally brings some level of peace. But this time was different. This was a whole different level of peace. 
I was pretty calm considering the circumstances. Get to the hospital, my mom's already inside, but I can't go in with her. So I need to hand the guard at the door whatever she needed. She needed her phone, she needed, I think, her medical card. So this is for Sylvia Cisneros. She just came in, these were her symptoms, so they know who she, who, you know, who they're, who she needs, who they need to give that stuff to. And I was pretty calm up until the hospital decided to transfer my mom to a completely different hospital without telling me. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. But even then, it wa I was calm. It was more annoyance than anything else. But please, don't get me wrong. I'm still a work in progress. It's not like that's my initial response now. But I'm happy to say that something that I felt needed that I needed to work on actually started to change. And it showed in a time of crisis, a time of stress. So once, <laughs> once I figured out that this is what I wanted to talk about, I went online, did my homework, and I did a search for the words praise him. There were so many results. I was surprised. I knew there were a lot of verses with those words, but seeing it for yourself is eye-opening. I mean, let me read a few, okay? Psalms 148 verses 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun moon praise him all you shining stars <laughs> psalms one, uh, 150 verses 1 through 5 praise the lord praise god in his sanctuary praise him in his mighty heavens praise him for his acts of power praise him for his surpassing greatness Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the tremble of dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise God. <laughs> now that I've got you all riled up, let me flip the coin on you. <laughs> if there is one thing that I have learned over the past year, now there are many, but if there is one thing that I want to point out today, it's that people love to complain. They love to gripe. I mean, people were complaining about the fact that they weren't able to get a haircut. I felt like every time I turned the TV on or opened social media, I heard nothing but negativity. Reports of people complaining they weren't allowed to go eat at a restaurant or go have uh, drinks with friends. Now, please, there were legitimate issues. Those who lost their jobs, those who were sick, I totally understand. You have to complain. You, you have to vocalize the trouble that you're going through. I get that. But those people complaining because they had to do a drive-up order for their favorite restaurant, rather than being able to sit inside. I mean, first of all, if you're complaining about having to go, not being able to go and sit inside your favorite restaurant, sit at your favorite booth, talk to your favorite server, that means you actually have the money to go to the restaurant, right? So, then we should be hearing, thank God I have the money to buy food from my favorite restaurant. Not how inconvenient it is not to be able to sit inside a building and eat. I can't believe it. I have to take my food home? Who's going to get me my refill? I mean... I feel like the world sounded like the Israelites who Moses brought out of Egypt. And let me read this. Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. 
Now the people became like those who complain and whine about their hardships. And the Lord heard it. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled. <laughs> and the fire of the Lord burned among them and devoured those in the outlying parts of the camp. So the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire died out. He named that place Tibera. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. The place of burning, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Chapter, uh, verse 4, the rabble. Now, let me give you what I understood the rabble is. The rabble, it's a unique word found only here in the Old Testament. It refers to the mixed multitude of non-Israelites who joined the Exodus. So these are the people who saw, wow, why are all these, this huge group leaving? What's going on? Oh, well, I want to join that. Let me go and join with you. Let me walk with you. They weren't part of the struggle they endured before they left. They joined in as they're walking by. Okay? So, verse 4. The rabble among them who followed Israel from Egypt had greedy desires for familiar and delicious food. And the Israelites wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish we ate freely and without cost in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and garlic. But now our appetite is gone. There is nothing at all in the way of food. Except for manna. The manna was like coriander seed and it looked like bdellium. Oh, I forgot to get a picture for you guys, but it does not look appetizing. You look that up online. <laughs> Uh, but it looked like bdellium, but people went out and gathered it and ground it in meals or beat it in mortars and boiled it in pots and made cakes with it. And it tasted like cakes baked with fresh olive oil. And when the dew fell on the camp at night, the manna fell with it. Can you imagine you wake up in the morning and you're like, you know what, I'm hungry. And you walk outside and you're like, I'm going to connect my manna for the day. Free of charge. Now, wouldn't it be that the people who were not part of the original group, the ones who were slaves, would start talking about the amazing food they had before they joined the group? Making it so that the original members begin to think, you know, they have a point. We used to eat whatever we want when we were back in Egypt. We weren't even charged for it. I'm going to speculate. Okay, I can't say for sure. This is just my point of view. But I'm going to speculate. They may not have had those thoughts on their own. I bet it was something like, hey, 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 you're one of God's favorites. Can you ask him to send down some meat every once in a while? I'm getting really tired of this manna. I mean, they were being taken care of. They were probably the healthiest they had ever been. If the Lord is sending down food, it had to have all the vitamins, the nutrients they needed to stay healthy. The Lord isn't going to starve his people. I would venture to say that those people were blessed to have manna provided to them every day. They were blessed every morning by the arrival of food, of the food the Lord Almighty saw fit to provide them. As a father, now I can say that as a father, I see fit to give my daughter the best I can the best I can afford. Now, if our Almighty, our great Father, is out there providing food, do you think he's going to go to the clearance section of the grocery market? No. He's going to the all-organic, guaranteed, A-plus area and saying, I need this whole section. I've got a ton of people. So... Let's bring it back to us. 
So when all of that was going on last year, and all that is still going on, can I ask you, were you blessed? If you take the time to think about it, how were you doing last year? And I'm not talking about the world, I'm not talking about society, or the opinion of others on social media, I'm talking about you personally. I will even extend the question to include your family. How were they? I can tell you my family was okay. I would venture to say we were on the better side of okay. I mean, somehow during that time, my wife and I were actually able to see our savings grow. Not a bunch, but we saw it grow. We started on the path to being debt free. We still have a ways to go for sure, but we were able to start during a time when we heard so many people struggling. And I thank God for that because it wasn't us. You may not have won the lottery. Someone may not have walked up to you, handed you keys to a new house or a free car. No one came and said you won groceries for a year. But did you pay attention to the little blessings? Did you catch those things that God did that made your life just that much better than what you were hearing other people say they were going through? Did you keep your eyes open to the work he was doing? Or did you fall into the crowd who's did you fall into the crowd who chose to complain about life and the world's circumstances? Did you forget to pay attention to what he was doing at home because you were too busy standing and complaining, complaining about others bashing your political views? Maybe those complaints turned into actual fears. Fear of not having enough food. Fear of not having enough water. Fear of not having enough. Then there is fear of what the country would turn into if your politician didn't win. Or maybe you skipped fear altogether and went straight to anger. Anger for having to go through the pandemic. Anger that things were not done the way they should have been. Anger that people were going into the stores and buying up everything you needed. <laughs> anger that people were going into stores without masks. How much of it was actually you? feeling that way, and how much of it was put in your head by the news you turned on, the, um, the posts on social media, the, you know, the radio hosts, you know, expressing their opinion. Let me say that before I go on, it, it's smart to stay informed. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you should be blind to what's going on. What I am saying is be selective, be objective on where you're getting your information. And if you can be objective, look at both sides and come to your own conclusion. Don't let other people do your homework for you. Do not allow yourself to be blinded by others' opinions that are shared as truths. Now let's look at Numbers, chapter 13, verses 25 to 33. God had asked um, Moses to send spies out to the land of Canaan. So they went out for 40 days, and now they've returned with news. When they returned from spying out the land, at the end of 40 days, they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back word to them and to all the congregation, and showed them the land's fruit. They reported to Moses and said, We went into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. The people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified. They have walls and are very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak, people of great stature and courage, essentially what 
our nursery rhymes and being Sunday school kids learned as giants. The Amalek live in the land of Negev, I think I'm saying that cor correct, the south country. The Hittite, the Jebusite, the Amorite live in the hill country. The Canaanites live by the Dead Sea and along the side of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession of it, for we will certainly conquer it. But then, here comes the people, but the men who had gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people of, Can the people of Canaan, for they are too strong for us. So they gave the Israelites a bad report about the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we went in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. They saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak are part of Nephilim, uh, and we were like grasshoppers in their sight, in our own sight, and so were we in their sight. Now, here is a great example of taking others' opinions as truth. In a perfect world, they would have said, thank you, Lord, for showing us a land filled with milk and honey actually exists. And they would have decided to seek God on the matter. Of course, God would have come back to them and said what he had already told them. The land is already yours. I've given it to you. Do not fear the people of the land. They're not your problem. But let's look at what really happened. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. Then all the congregation of Israel raised their voices and cried out, and the people wept that night. All the Israelites murmured in discontent against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, Oh, that we had died in the land of Egypt, or that we had died in the wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land of Canaan? To fall by the sword? Our wives and children will become plunder. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said together, let us appoint a new leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of Israelites. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Heenan, I, Sorry if I butchered that. Who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes as a sign of grief. And they spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, The land through which we passed as spies is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows of milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they will be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But all the congregation said to stone Joshua and Caleb with stones. But the glory and the brilliance of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting before all the sons of Israel. And there you go again complaining, why have you brought us here? You made us travel all this far just to come to people who are going to kill us by the sword? Lord, what did you do? Why? Why did you have us deal with all of this just to come to a land we can't even get? We should go back. Let's go back to Egypt. Never mind that we used to be slaves in Egypt. Never mind that we were beaten if we were slow at our job. Isn't it easier to go back to your past because it's familiar? Familiar is comfort. Never mind that comfort comes with everything the Lord has already brought you out of. For a lot of us, the world is familiar. So when the world starts speaking, that old familiar feeling comes creeping in. And before you know it, you're speaking what they are speaking because somehow you can see their point of view. 
never mind that the point of view goes against what you now believe. But on the same token, those that stand for what they now believe get so caught up in what is being said, they lose sight of the reason they were standing in the first place. Then it becomes a sense of pride to stand for whatever it was they started the whole thing for. I understand we all have our, our strong convictions, but when a worldly event can consume so much of your attention that you're not able to see the good that is going on around you, and the opinions of others become like scriptures to you because they match your point of view, a priority check is needed. And I'm sure you will find God is no longer the priority. That topic is. That topic you decided to stand for and speak out about is so much so that you stood for it and it and you took it and it distracted you from the person who should be at the very top of your list. And you when you are in situations like that, how often do your prayers consist of requests, concerns, and gripes? How many praises were sent up by you during those situations? How many thank yous were sent up that were not in response to something that you felt went in your favor? Thank you, Lord, that happened. Thank you, Lord, I got what I wanted. Thank you, Lord, they came over to my side to see my point of view. Did you give him the glory he deserved during that time? Recent things that come to mind are like, were you so worried about whether people should be out or not? Should they be wearing a mask or not? Does it infringe on my rights that I'm told I need to wear a mask? I mean, come on, church. I feel like the church had a huge opportunity to speak about God's love and faithfulness during that time. But we were sucked into the vortex that was anger, hate, disdain, depression, self-loathing. And we didn't even realize it. We fell in with the complainers of the world. The people who fear tomorrow because it's unknown. But we are believers. God told us what we should do about tomorrow. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. But if God so clothes, clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut down and thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, therefore do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? For the Gentiles eagerly, eagerly seek all these things. But do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first and, first and most importantly, Seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Or Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. Do not fear anything. For I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, a power, a victory of salvation. Had we, the church, relied on his word, it would have freed us up to be here in the present, able to spread the word that speaks about the God we rely on so heavily. The one we stand on because he is a firm foundation. The God that gave us life 
and the word to be able to sustain it. We could have been the example of peace in the world. We could have been the example of love in the world. We could have been the ones with joy in an unhappy time. I mean, how many people do you think said something like, they're crazy for having a worship night right now during this pandemic? We worshiped the Lord for close to four hours that night. And I say close because I don't count the times when things weren't being played. But that night, we were the people with love. We were the people with peace. We were the ones with joy. We were the ones with all of that. Not because we had a night of complaints. Not because we had a night of gripes. Not because we had a night of requests. Because we had a night of worship. A night of praise. A night of thanksgiving. Are you praising God like you are called to do? Are you thanking him for the little blessings in your life along with the big blessings? Or are you letting those pass by? Are you not keeping your eyes open to the little things that God does for you? I count my paycheck as a blessing. It may be something I get every two weeks, but God gave me the job. God has allowed me to keep my job. That's a blessing. But how easy it is to say, oh, my direct deposit came through. Perfect. And never say, thank you, God. I got my paycheck today. Thank you, God, for the job that allows me to get my paycheck today. Thank you, God, for allowing me to go and buy groceries today. Thank you, God, for allowing me to have a roof over my head. Thank you, God, for allowing me to have a family that's healthy and on the mend. Thank you, God, for my daughter. How easy it is to let those things go by and not say thank you or feel blessed by it or consider that a blessing from God. Are you worshiping him in everything that you do? Are you rejoicing in everything he has done? Are you thanking him for everything he is doing and is going to do for you? Are you quenching the spirit by complaining all the time, by allowing the views and opinions of others to influence your actions and moods? Let's look at verse Thess uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians again. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Church, let's strive to be a beacon of positivity in this negative world. We are not of this world, so should we follow along with the mood swings of the world? Amen? No, we shouldn't. Of course not. We should be consistent in our approach to others. How about being consistent in our love for others? I mean, we receive love in abundance every day, don't we? Can we not share that abundance with others around us? How about being a comfort to others? Does God not provide us comfort whenever we need it? What if we strive to be someone who is consistent in caring? Does God not care for us every minute of every day? Now, I understand we don't have all of these gifts. Some people just do not have the gift of lending an ear. I have an aunt. She does not have the gift of lending an ear. She just not possible, but she has the biggest heart that I have ever seen, and she will care. She cares for her family. She cares for the people that she loves. And if I say, Aunt, this is, this is, they're dealing, they're dealing, if there is something she can do, she will do it. 
just don't go and complain to her on the phone because she just doesn't have patience for that. <laughs> and I get that. And we all can't be everything. But we can all be something. And if your love and if your caring and if your patience and if your, your listening, if we work together because we are the church, we are the body, guess what? We are everything. We need to remember all the blessings we have received. That way, when trouble comes around, we won't be like the Israelites saved from Egypt complaining to God because we don't have that. We're tired of this. Let's not be so easy to listen to those that are con contradicting what has been promised to us. Just because they're speaking with conviction does not mean their conviction is one you should take on. Church, all I'm asking you to do this morning is to remember to praise him, to remember to thank him, to give him the glory. I pray that you start to do it so much that it becomes your first instinct in every situation. Let your prayers be ones of thanks, praise, and adoration for the loving, caring, comforting, forgiving, merciful provider that is our God and Father. Can we praise him this morning? Will you get loud with me as I read out some of the verses I found when I did that search? You can read along with me, or you can just amen, you, whatever you feel comfortable with. But let's get loud, because we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to praise God this morning. Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people, for his loving kindness prevails over us. And we triumph and overcome through him. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans chapter 15, verse 11. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. <laughs> Psalm 135. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O servants of the Lord, priests and Levites, you who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is gracious and lovely. <laughs> Psalms 109, verse 30. I will give great praise and thanks to the Lord with my mouth. And in the midst of many, I will praise him. Psalms 149. I uh, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise him in the congregation of his godly ones. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praises to him with the trombone and the lyre. First Chronicles 16, 8 through 10. We're going to continue, church. We've got a few more to go. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make his deeds known among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Sing of all his wonders. Glory, his, glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. <laughs> Psalms 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength. My impenetrable shield, my, faith, my trust, and with unwavering confidence in him, I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I shall thank him and praise him. Yes, Psalms 148, 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. 
Praise him, all you shining stars. Psalms 150, 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with trumble and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise God. <laughs> yes, we praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. My God, we praise you. We worship you, God. We glorify you, God. Father, we get loud for you, Jesus. We get excited for you, God. We cry for you, God. We praise you, Jesus. You are mighty, God. Oh, you are holy, God. Yes, we praise you, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, God. With all our ability, we glorify you, God. You're amazing. You're wonderful. You're powerful. You're glorious. You're a giving God. You're a loving God. You're a comforter. You're a healer. You're a provider. Father, you are everything we need and more. And we praise you for that. We thank you for that. Father, in all situations, we praise you. We praise you, Father. We thank you, God. stand for a moment and just do you guys feel the glory this morning because I feel the glory yeah. well I want to welcome you all here <laughs> maybe a little late but I want to welcome you all all of those that are watching on Facebook and on YouTube thank you for watching Thank you for listening. I hope this spoke to you. Because it spoke to me. And I hope that it spoke to you. And for those of you who are watching online and you don't have a church home, I invite you to La Mirada Four Square Church. <laughs> It's definitely something to be excited about. If you came here, you'd understand why they started to clap. It is an amazing church. It's a great church. It's a spirit-filled church. Yes. And we seek the spirit consistently. For those that are watching and may not know the Lord, if you're interested in seeking out the God that we want to praise so much the god that we want to love on so much the god that we rely on so much for a lot of things in our lives i invite you to pray with me right now father i recognize my need of the savior i recognize that i am not perfect but you are And I ask that you come into my heart and cleanse it 
and open it up to your spirit, your love, your peace, and your joy. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and amen. And I believe it's announcements. All right, who's doing announcements? Oh, Amanda. Let's welcome Amanda. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome. So April 18th announcements, there will be prayer Mondays at 6 a.m. until the Holy Spirit is done with us. And if you have any prayers, please, please let us know. We do love to pray for everybody, and you are more than welcome to join us. If you can't make it at 6 a.m., we have 6 p.m. prayer on Monday nights. And then we also have Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. If you can't make Mondays, we have another day for you. And then we have Bible study Wednesday night with Pastor Bob at 7 p.m. We are studying Acts, the second part of the book. Uh, it's been a great time and um, learning about the Holy Spirit and the movement of the Pentecost. And then our joint and praise worship evening has been rescheduled for Saturday, June 5th. It will be here outside and... We don't, well, the starting time is at 5 p.m. Uh, if you want to, we will not be providing chairs, so if you bring your own chairs, it'd be good. We do have a few extra here, but not many. So bring your friends, bring your family, come on out, uh, we'll, and bring your umbrella if you want some shade. I think it's still going to be sunny, <laughs> summertime, so think summertime, sunblock, whatever you need. Um, most importantly, bring yourselves. Uh, and also prepare your hearts before you come. Um, go ahead and start praying for it now because I'm so anxious for it. I loved it last one we did. If you missed it, you'll get another chance on the June 5th. And then Saturday, May 1st, we will be having our time of prayer with the, um, here from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. where we are going to be focusing uh, salvation for our loved ones uh, who do not know Jesus Christ. And you can see me or my husband uh, for more information. And then tonight we will also have Spanish Bible study here at 5 p.m. And I think that is all I have. Oh, one more thing. It's not on here, but I would love to encourage now that everyone's coming out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if you want to serve in the church, please, please don't hesitate. Come see me. Um, we, we could use more helpers in the church uh, always. Um, so just please, please see me. Don't be afraid. Even if you have any questions, you can see me. Uh, and now it is offering time. <laughs> Let's praise the Lord. Let's remember what was spoken and have open hearts to praise God today. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. In holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart.
we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
where I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. what you're doing in this place, God. For the word that was a timely word spoken, God. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we have chosen to complain instead of praising. Forgive us for the times that we put something else as a priority above you. Forgive us for the times that we put an ideology or an opinion above what your word says. God, may praise become the first instinct, Lord. May thanksgiving become our first instinct, God. When circumstances arise, let us learn to praise instead of complain. Let us learn to thank you in advance. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we thank you in every circumstance. That praise and thanks would be continually falling from our lips. May we go from this place, God. As we go through this week, may this word fall on good ground, God. May this word produce a fruit 30, 60, 100 fold in our lives. That we would be changed and that we would learn to thank you and to praise you, God. That we would learn to always put you first, put your word first. Put what you say first above our own thoughts, our own feelings, above the circumstances that we face, God, that you would be high and lifted up above everything, God. May we have a posture of worship always. May we be humble before you, God, knowing that you give us all things, that you have done so many things so many things that we don't even recognize that you bless us with, that you woke us up this morning, that you gave us the breath in our lungs, that you gave us the ability to be with our, the people of God in this place, that we have a roof over our heads, that we are able to eat and have food in our bellies, that we have health in our bones. May we never take for granted the many blessings you give us freely because of your unfailing, perfect love that you pour out on us daily. May you be glorified in us, God, as we leave this place, God, that you would be glorified and magnified exponentially in our lives. That we would, that our lives would be a living sacrifice a living sacrifice to you, Jesus. We thank you, God. And we love you, Lord. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>